Matthew 24. Book of Matthew, chapter 24. Scholars, Bible uh, theologians refer to this passage of Scripture as the Olivet Discourse as Jesus begins to pro, uh, proclaim and prepare his disciples for his second coming, for, for the coming, um, the end times, the apocalypse. Um, Matthew 24, verse 42, if you have that, if you'll stand. The Bible says, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that uh, evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want to talk for just a few minutes on great expectation. Great expectation. Let's pray. Lord, we know that your coming is near. We know that your coming is even at the door. God, I pray that you will make us aware. I pray that you will keep our eyes expectantly looking for you, watching for you, our hearts attuned to your spirit. God, I pray that you will lift up our hearts toward heaven. I pray, God, that you will fill us with your Spirit. I pray that you will open us up to hear what it is that your Spirit would speak to our hearts, God, to make us anticipate your coming for this church and for the, the events that are to come afterwards. God, I pray that you will give us a, a, a desire to see the lost saved. I pray that you will... Just continue to bless us and keep us, bless this service for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. In his book, Countdown to the Apocalypse, Dennis Lyle tells of a tourist who went to visit a beautiful mansion in Switzerland. The lakeside mansion was surrounded by elegant gardens, all neatly tended. In fact, everything was immaculate. How long have you been caretaker here, the tourist asked when he finally located the gardener. I've been here 20 years, was the reply. And during that time, how often has the owner of the property been in residence? The gardener smiled. He has been here only four times. The tourist was amazed. To think all these years you've kept this house and these gardens in such superb condition. You tend them as if you expected him to come tomorrow. Oh no, replied the gardener. I look after them as if I expected him to come today. I wonder, in examining my own life and the parts of y'all's life that I know and the lives of others, I've become, I've become st struck with the realization that if we're living like Christ could come tomorrow, we will likely come up about a day short. 
I want to talk just a couple of minutes briefly about a doctrine called eminence. It's a doctrine that has fallen by the wayside in many churches, denominations, and it is even being something that is being pushed to the back burner in the Church of God and Pentecostal circles, the do doctrine of eminence. Now, I know that not everybody's into doctrine, I understand that, but I can tell you right now that without doctrine, we don't know whether or not we're pleasing God. Doctrine is that which keeps us, let me tell you, it's great to find the straight and narrow path. It is a wonderful blessing to be on the path that leads to heaven. Doctrine is what keeps us there. Because we are prone to wander. We all, like sheep, the Bible says, have gone astray. And what keeps us on the path? The Bible says that His rod and His staff comforts us. What are His rod and His staff? The doctrines, the commandments that He has made for us that keeps us in line. I have laws and rules in my house that are designed to keep the house moving smoothly and my children must obey them. My Father in heaven has a similar set of rules. It keeps His kingdom running smoothly. And what He expects is His children to keep His rules. There are a lot of people who don't like to think of Christianity as a set of rules. It's about all about a relationship. You start having a relationship and start breaking all the rules and tell me how well that relationship is going to continue. There's nothing that will throw things more into disarray than when you have a relationship that doesn't follow the rules. And so I'm really getting, quite honestly, I'm getting sick. Almost sick to death. Sick to my stomach about this push or relationship, relationship, relationship at the expense of rules. I do recognize relationships important, but our integrity is found in, that, in the guidelines, in the boundaries, in doctrine. The church used to express doctrine. Now we've abandoned it and we wonder why the church has lost its power and why nobody seems to be taking this thing seriously. Because doctrine matters. And in this one point, there's a lot of things I care about. In this one point, I don't care whether anybody agrees with me or not. It is so. If it was not so, there wouldn't be 66 books full of it. Eminence means the next expectation. The next expectation. You know one of the great things about the rules of God is if you follow them, you get rewarded. It's not blind following. It's not simply doing and without any expectation. There is some expectation. Let me tell you something. The doctrine of eminence 